Leanna Hawkins, and we are at the Distressed Investing Summit today, featuring the 18th Annual Turnaround Awards here at m TV. And I am joined by Drew McManigal, the founder and CEO at Maco Restructuring Group. Welcome, Drew. Hi, thanks to be here. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you. Um, Drew, we're so happy to have you here today at m TV and at the summit. You are the, the big kahuna on the banners this time. You're winning the big leadership award today. Congratulations. Thank you very much. It's, uh, it's very humbling, and I'm very appreciative of that award. Mm -hmm, absolutely. So tell me more about the award and uh, maybe be so humble as to tell us some, some things about your career and why you may have received the award today. Well, you know, it's, it's one of those things when you reach the stage where you're mature, you know, you, it makes you a little nervous about getting awards because, you know, getting an award and then, and then you it's the exit out the door. <laughs> but, uh, you know, there's a long list of prior winners uh, who have had tremendous careers in, in restructuring. I've been in the restructuring business for 35 years now. And uh, it's nice to be recognized for f not just a case or two, but a body of work that, that you've you know, accomplished over the years. And because I'm an operator more than a finance guy, uh, you know, we focus on really fixing the business you know, and the problems that underlie its getting into trouble in the first place. So it, you know, that's a lot of fun for me, and I enjoy doing that. And that's what our focus is at MACO. What would you say are maybe one or two standout points from your career? I think the first one was when I was appointed a Chapter 11 trustee in front of Burt Lifflin, Judge, the late Burton Lifflin uh, in New York, who was the judge, you know, in, at the time. And uh, it was a opiate pharmaceutical company that had been a leveraged buyout that was in trouble. Uh, at the time, it was one of three companies that had, in the United States, that had licenses issued by the DEA, <coughs> excuse me, to import, export, conduct research and sell opiates. And this was long before the Sacklers and long before Purdue and, and all this other nonsense. So it was really interesting in trying to get that company reorganized, keep it alive, and, you know, fend off attacks virtually from, you know, all of our competitors who wanted us to go out of business because they didn't want a competitor with those licenses. And we were successful. As a Chapter 11 trustee, I was successful in getting it reorganized and selling it and you know, moving on. Wow, very cool. So that's fun. And so one of the things we're focusing on today as well is sort of asking people what their outlook is for the next three quarters, the end of 2024. What are your thoughts on 2024? I think it's going to be, you know, a train wreck, quite frankly. Uh, I always think about the, the opening of the movie Armageddon, you know, it happened once, it will happen again kind of thing. And I think that's true. I mean, if you look at commercial real estate, it's in the tank. Uh, retail continues to be in the tank. Uh, banking that is, especially regional banking and private banking that's, that's connected to commercial real estate, it's going to be in the tank. You know, you've already seen, you know, Signature Bank failed and, and some of the big ones mm -hmm. uh, that are having to bolster their reserves. Um, oil and gas, uh, you know, which, as you know, I'm intimately familiar with, is, is still struggling. Uh, so I don't really see... Uh, uh, segment of the economy that's not going to be affected, quite frankly, in, in some form or fashion. Mm -hmm. Well, to end on a positive note, <laughs> <laughs> let's I, know, I always get accused of being Darth Vader. I don't know why. <laughs> well, to end on a positive positive note, let's talk about um, three, the 363 sales process, yep. something that many people are being recognized for awards for working in, in that part of MA this year. Um, what are your insights and best practices around 363 sales? I think, I think it's transparency, uh, transparency, transparency, and the process. You know, that way, uh, you know, getting a company out to the largest segment of uh, prospective buyers that you can so that you can make the best deal, uh, and being transparent within the context of a bankruptcy proceeding so that creditors, shareholders, uh, parties in interest are all convinced that this sale m both makes sense and is going to yield a result that's going to, you know, underlie whatever the plan of reorganization is. Mm -hmm. And most importantly is that it's going to keep the company alive, that it's going to, you know, it's going to go to new owners, perhaps old equity gets wiped out. You know, that's the benefit of the bargain sometimes, sorry, but that's how it works. But that the employees and the company and the enterprise value continues, and I think that's the real beauty of 363B sales in Chapter 11s. Well, Drew, you are such an impressive leader in the space, and uh, we're so Thank lucky you. to have you at TV today. You uh, have a really impressive career and a wonderful family that supported you along the way. So thank you so much for being here today. Always a pleasure. Thank you.